page 70 continued from the previous file literary types the lyric page 72 emotions in poetry but there is such a thing as emotion of intellect the term emotion of intellect means that sometimes a particular idea or philosophy so intensely moves a poet that he feels it deep in his heart and he gives emotional equivalent of his idea in poetry. As for example, Wordsworth's Lines Return on Tintern Abbey is a philosophical poem because here a philosophical idea has been transmuted into poetry through emotions and imagination. Moreover, great lyrics are meditative. Keats' Ode to a Nightingale begins with sensations, rises to emotions and ends with meditation. Hudson rightly says, quote, We need not quarrel with a poet who offers philosophy in the fashion of poetry. We require that his philosophy should be transfigured by imagination and feeling, that it should be shaped into a thing of beauty, that it should be wrought into true poetic expression." Unquote. In Wordsworth's Immortality Ode, reflection is carried on the tide of feelings so rapturously expressed. When the poet speaks of the experience of his childhood and moans over the loss of glory, quote, whither is fled the visionary gleam, unquote, a deep lyrical note is struck. The cry of the human heart for consolation finds a responsive echo in every human heart. In Arnold's The Scholar Gypsy, quote, the Virgilian cry over the mournfulness of morta mortality, unquote, has a lyrical fervor that thrills the heart and inspires the mind. Modern poets like St. John Peirce, Ezra Pound, T.S. Eliot, Auden, and Dylan Thomas write lyrics of ideas which combine musically to form and richness of ideas. As a matter of fact, mere emotions cannot make for good poetry. Value of poetic truth is as important as the value of emotions and music in poetry. Intellection plays a large part in the composition of poetry. Poets have to pass through a laborious process for giving inspired truth in bracket Bernard Shaw, bracket closed in poetry. They have to reason and feel their way to it. They have to suffer solitude, pain of heart, distress and poverty. They are toughened and disciplined in the school of sorrow. This rigorous education fortifies their minds and intensifies their perception of reality. Through intellection, the poets come to the deeper realization of truth. Wordsworth poetry is greater than Davis's poem because of intellectual profundity of the former. Paradise Lost and King Lear hold a permanent attraction for the readers of poetry because of their rich intellectual content. Mere incantation of poetry is hollow and inane if poetry is bereft of ideas. And these ideas come to the poet through hard intellectual and reasoning process. Page 73. Moreover, intellectual element is prominent in poetry in the judicious selection of words and expressions and fastidious use of imagery. Imagination works with intellect to produce images in poetry. In order to please, poetry must present what appears to be true and beautiful, marvelous and very similar. Arnold speaks of imaginative reason as exemplified in the greatest poetry. An artist combines, harmonizes and vivifies every detail 
into an integrated whole and this is a conscious intellectual process. A poet has to hammer his brain in order to find out the right word for his feeling and appropriate image to exemplify his emotion and thought. Milton has said that poets live, quote, laborious days, unquote. Horace advises the poets to choose the words and revise them meticulously so that ordinary words may take on fresh meaning. A poet has to work day and night. Poetry is communication of feelings and communication is an intellectual process. Meter and metaphor are two organizing principles of poetry. Poetry organizes a unique, unrepeatable pattern of words and this act of organization is highly intellectual process, an act of mind. Ezra Pound defines the image as, quote, that which presents an intellectual and emotional complex in an instant of time, unquote. Quote, a unification of disparate ideas, unquote. Creative process is an activity of mind. Mere sensibility is not enough for poetry. Sensibility is passive and has to be animated by an activity of mind for producing work of art. Question 35. Lyric poetry is not more personal, it is universal too. Do you agree? Answer. Lyrics are subjective poems and express the personal feelings and experiences of the poets. It is introspective and is an expression of, quote, egotistical sublime, unquote. Lyrics are, however, sensual, imaginative and mystical. The sensual lyrics enjoy an unbroken continuity from the 6th century to the 20th in the sonnets of Ronsard and, and the Pleiad, the love poetry of the Elizabethans and metaphysicals. The sensuous images of Keats and the Romantics, symbolist glorification of the self, the neurotic sensualism of the yellow 90s. Ranging from the Carpe Diem to the Memento Mori, the sensual tradition is sustained in different forms by Shakespeare, Donne, Collins, Hein, Baudelaire, Mallarmé, Dylan, Thomas, etc. The personal role, note, is pronounced in the sensual tradition of the lyric. The imaginative or intellectualized lyric of emotion furnishes a host of examples. The German lyricists like Goethe, Schiller, Rilke, Hauptmann are examples of this type of lyricists. They intellectualize their mental and emotional states by subtle images and intellectual, page 74, parallels. Many of the modern poets like Eliot, Auden, Magnus and Spender fall into this category. Among the mystical lyricists, mention may be made of Herbert, Vaughan, Blake, Hopkins, Keats, Rilke. These groups of the lyric poetry stress the personal emotion of the poets. There are to be distinguished from the lyrics of version or the lyrics of thought or idea. They are objective in tune, the lyric of vision, which has its antecedents in classic, Anglo-Saxon and Chinese poetry, is the externalized kind of lyric, utilizing the pictorial element to represent the object or concept treated in the context of the poem itself. It follows MacLeish's admonition, admonition that, quote, a poem should not man, mean but be, unquote. Lyrics are of various types, but all the types focus the personal emotions and ideas of the poets. 
they touch nearly all aspects of experience from those which are narrowly individual to those which involve the broadest interests of humanity thus there is the convival or bacchanalian lyric which deals with the lighter things of life as in the so called verse the society the lyric of love in all its phases and with all its attendant hopes and longings joy and sorrows the lyric of patriotism the lyric of religious emotion etc great lyrics however always transcendent sorry always transcend personal feelings and embody what is human and therefore universal the reader thus finds in them the expression of experience and feelings in which he himself is able to share tennyson's break 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 is a passionate expression of the personal feeling of grief for a lost friend but it produces a responsive echo in every heart because it embodies a universal sentiment of grief arnold's to margaret margaret is a personal poem expressing the despair of love but he universalizes the feeling by the use of a sustained symbolism the romantic poets are the greatest egoists but their poems express emotions that stir the hearts of all keats ode to a nightingale or shelley's ode to the west wind transcend the personal emotions of the poets and embody the universal yearning for an ideal beauty and that prophetic ardor that moves the heart of all the readers byron the fuer the fullest exponent of that extreme individualism often poured into his verse the world passions that shook all europe in the revolutionary age words words lines written on tintern abbey and ode to intimations of immortality sorry immortality express personal ideas about the growth of the poet's mind under the influence of nature and about immortality and childhood but their emotional treatment appeals to the hearts of all page 75 and they are imbued with nostalgia for nature and childhood what is personal becomes transcendental and universal by the poetic art of the writers this constitutes the aesthetic pleasure question 36 state why the lyrics is the prevailing form today indicate some of the characteristic features of the modern lyric answer lyric is subjective and expresses the poet's personal mood and emotion romantic poetry is subjective and romantic poets find lyrics suitable medium for the expression of their egoistic impulses romantic poets were sick of reality and expressed personal despair and prophetic ardor they ventilated their grievances and disgust with the present but their imaginative fervor restored reality at a higher point they had dreams and visions and thus their lyrics enacted the dialectic of despair and hope distrust and faith fears and joys modern poets are also sick at heart they are disillusioned with modern civilization lyric is a suitable form for them to express their disillusionment and bitterness unlike the romantic poets many of them have no hope for and faith in future poetry in the 20s and 30s was immersed in destructive element living in the midst of chaos and in the midst of chaos the modernist poet abandons all hope of social structure and contemplates the role of life for the isolated individual 
each poem is an island unto itself, not to be related to other works, but solely to its own evocation. The lonely individual contemplates the chaos and decadence of modern culture into lyrics. They are preoccupied with their private emotions and thoughts. Their emotional and intellectual sensibility cannot be expressed in impersonal drama and objective epic. But modern lyrics are different from the direct lyrics of romantic poets. Modern poets intellectualize their mental and emotional states by subtle images and intellectual parallels. This was evident in the poetry of John Donne and this is predominant in the poetry of Eliot, Auden, McNeese, Spender and Dylan Thomas. T.S. Eliot expresses his personal dilemma in this wasteland of modern civilization through a farrago of myths, images, allusions and quotations. They provide the objective correlative to the poet's personal emotion of disillusionment with the decay and deadness of modern civilization. In his earlier poem, Life Song of Alfred Prufrock and Prelude, he expresses his personal mood of disenchantment with the shabbiness and monotony of modern life through the structure of images and music. According to Eliot, emotion of art is impersonal. Page 76 Personal emotions might form the raw materials, but they are organized in a detached, concentrated manner and transmuted into images without reference to personal history. Modern poets and critics believe that the lyric is an expression of the poet's personal feelings. But if it is direct, there is a considerable loss of inartistic power. Keats also believed in the impersonality of lyrical poetry when he speaks of negative capability as distinguished from egotistical sublime. His Ode to Autumn or Ode on a Gratian Urn is a supreme example of total imaginative surrender to nature and art. Subjective feelings about autumn are externalized in a series of concrete objective images. The modern poets use private symbols. Daring rhythms and irregular metrical patterns have often created an exciting freshness unknown to earlier verse. Edith Sitwell's imaginative brooding on death and time will have its relevance. Gold Coast customs is a great symbolic presentation of a diseased society, of rat fat souls and of greed and corruption. However, Edith Sitwell's long poem, The Sleeping Beauty, is a rare continuity of beauty, highly wrought, glowing with color and dazzling with imagery. Auden Spender Day Lewis write lyrics in which their personal feelings about the decaying middle-class society, war, politics and love, but their lyrical emotions are external, externalized in a curious mixture of images. Louis MacNeese in his Autumn Journal writes about the Munich crisis in 1938 in a colloquial tone. He packs into his poems all the paraphernalia of the modern world in a riot of imagery. Buses, guns, diabetes, Picasso, museums, golf, bank account, factories, felons, and jazz, etc. Dylan Thomas could generate powerful excitement through volcanic energy and eloquence. In, in Poem in October, memory and actuality are fused in images. Fern Hill has a number of sure realistic images. Sidney Case represented the neo-romantic group 
which reacts against the realism of the 1930s. He writes, quote, I feel myself isolated as a writer. I am not a man, but a voice, unquote. The feeling of loveless and human condition is expressed in a majority of lyrics in the poetry of Philip Larkin, Roy Fuller and Donald Davy. There is a disillusioned, ironic self-scrutiny and allusion to the apparently trivial in everyday life. Modern lyrics are adapted to the representation of the moods and emotions of the poets. The expression of self is made through a pattern of images and words which objectify the personal feelings of the poets. The new criticism of I.A. Richards, Empson, Ezra Pound and Eliot emphasize the form and images in poetry rather than the page 77 direct expression of the poet's feelings. The lyric is an expression of the poet's personal feelings, but if it is direct there is a considerable loss in artistic power. It must achieve obliquity or ambiguity through subtle use of images, irony and nuances. The modern poet's reading of life is rendered in objective terms. His set of values are embodied and dramatized in the poem's evolving meanings, imagery and symbolic action. The 20th century has prized the dramatic highly, thus it its emphasis is on show rather than tell. Modern lyrics objectify the personal feelings through a complex pattern of images, allusions and quotations and monologues, etc. It is impersonal because the personality is obliterated in the association of thoughts, linking of images and associations by thought. In the ironical and detached presentation of the moods in the cluster of images which convey the feelings and ideas. The random disparate images are welded into a rounded whole by the poet's personal emotion and thought. These are discursive, disparate, elliptical shots or images but they combine to represent the mood and emotion of the poets. Indeed, the lyrics of modern poets are different from the direct self-projections of the 19th century romantics. The lyric has been expanded and developed through the centuries until it has become one of the chief literary instruments which focus and evaluate the human condition. Next topic, the epic poetry. Number one, the epic. An epic is a long narrative poem on the grand scale dealing with the heroic deeds of one or more characters from history or legend. It is a heroic story incorporating myth, legend, folk tale and history. The deeds involve a great number of characters as well as a large background. Gods and spirits often join in the action. Aristotle wrote an epic, but his remarks show no recognition of it as being peculiarly interpretative of life, nor does he conceive it to be the vehicle for conveying general ideas. Fuller rec recognition of the achievement and potentialities of epic were possible only when Virgil wrote Ionide, which was deliberately conceived to give meaning to the destiny of a people, asserting the implication of their history and recognizing the significance of contemporary events in relation to the past. The important contribution to the theoretical discussion on the subject of epic appeared in the 17th century in France, continued in the next file.